I was this guy who used to sit in the library for five to six hours at once. And I tried to read as much as possible in that time because the exam was around the corner. But every single time what happened is I never could finish the amount of stuff that I want to finish. Like if I want to finish like 10 pages, I'll be finishing some three or four pages at max. Even though I was spending some four to six hours, I wouldn't even go for a toilet break because I thought that was waste of time. Because when I sit to study, I want to excuse everything out of that time. That was my mindset. But doing this got me nowhere because the day before the exam, I'll be having a bucket lot of syllabus and almost all the time I won't be finishing even half of it. Then the things that I study the day before exam, I'll be just pumping it onto my head like I told in the first video. I'll be pumping and I'll be dumping. And whenever that same topic is repeated in a future exam, I'm gonna have to do this all over again. This pumping and dumping, I'm gonna have to do it all over again. I read once, I appear for the exam, I forget. Then when the next exam comes, I reread that same thing. Then after giving that exam, I forget again. And this has been happening with me throughout the medical school till I made use of this tool that I'll be talking later. If you are this person who is finding hard to finish the topics that you want to finish and you are reading, forgetting, rereading and then again forgetting, then you came to the right place. Watch this video till the end to know about three strategies that revolutionized my learning in medical school. Let's get started. This will be the second video in the five part series, CID Study Revolution. So in this video, I will be talking about the three strategies that I use to tackle medical school. The number one is like I told you in the last video, Pareto principle or commonly called as the 80-20 rule. And the second one is the Pomodoro technique. And the third one is active recall. So let's start with the Pareto principle. If you are this guy who is a productivity freak, who is trying to increase their productivity all the time, then you most probably would have heard this Pareto principle. So in this video, I'll be talking about how I apply this principle to make me get an above average mark in all the exams. So let's talk about how this principle came into being. There was this Italian engineer come economist come political scientist come sociologist. Yeah, he has a lot of designations. His name was Wilfredo Pareto. He had this garden in which he grew peas. So during the time of harvest, when he looked at it, he saw that 80% of the produce came from 20% of the pea pods and the rest 20% came from 80% of the remaining pea pods. So this kept him thinking. When he thought about it, he found out that 80% of the wealth, 80% of the land in Italy was owned by 20% of the people. He tried to apply this everywhere in his life and when he looked at it, everywhere this was happening. Maybe not always 80-20, maybe 60-40, maybe 90-10 or maybe 70-30. But almost always it was like this. A small amount of the input gave a large amount of the output. And for the rest of the small amount of the output, you had to do a lot of work. You had to give a lot of input. So when I thought about it, this was true in my case also. Like in my phone, I use 10% of the apps 90% of the time. Rest 90% of the app, I don't even use. Hardly 10% I use them. And then about my clothes. Yes, you can see for yourself. I wear a very few of them, some three or four pairs of clothes almost all the time. Even though I have many, I don't wear them. I don't like to wear them. I feel comfortable in a select few and I use that almost all the time. This was true in the matter of relationships also. I was finding 80% fulfillment in my life from 20% of the friends, 20% of the relations that I had. The rest 80% gave only 20% fulfillment or satisfaction or happiness, whatever you call it. And when I looked at the things that I have in my room, I used that 30% of the stuff 70% of the time. And the 70% of the stuff was almost useless. I would use them once in a blue moon, that's all. 
So that got me thinking: How can I use this principle to improve my daily life? Then what I did is I uninstalled many of the apps that I was not using. Then the things in my room, I put all of the things that I don't use much in a cardboard box and set it aside. And now my room looks very tidy actually, because I had all this stuff piling up in my room, which I didn't even use. These are the use case scenarios of Pareto principle in your daily life. So now I will talk about how you can use Pareto principle to boost your marks in med school without having to slog for some eight to ten hours daily. Like I told in the last video, many of the people who were studying some four to six hours daily fail. But I was fortunately I was able to pass that exam because I unknowingly used this principle there. So now you know that you just need to put 20% of the input and you will be getting 80% of the output. So how will you find that high yield 20% input or 20% topics that you need to study? And how does this work in medicine also? Because when you look at it, when you go to the medicine of video or surgery of video or anywhere, 80% of the patients are coming for some four or five diseases. That's all. So if you know those four or five diseases properly, you will be able to treat these 80% of the people without any problems. So when an examiner is setting up a paper, he will definitely be wanting you to know these topics because these are the most important ones. If you don't know these topics, then you won't even become an average doctor. But if you know these topics, you are an average doctor. So he will definitely be putting questions from these topics. So one way you can know this high yield topic is going to the OPDs and watching the cases that are coming. So the cases that are coming over and over again, a question is going to come from there. That is a very important topic and you need to know that. Then the second method to know this topic, the technique that I used was looking at the questions that was being repeated over and over again. So what I will do is I will go ask some seniors or somebody from my own batch who is having all the question papers, all the previous year question papers. Then what I will do is I will go through all these questions and I will find out the questions that are repeated over and over and over again. And I will put them in group A, the questions that were repeated again and again and again, some three times those questions were repeated. I will put them in group A. So that group of questions is must know. You should know this. Whatever happens, you can't go to the exam without knowing those questions. Then the questions that were repeated twice, not more than that, just twice those questions were repeated. I will put them in group B. Then in group C, I'll be putting the questions that were asked only once. So I will first finish the group A questions. Then if I have time, I will go into group B. Then if I have more time, then I'll be going into group C. So this was one technique that I used to know the high yield topics. So this strategy was working like a Toyota Hilux for me. For those of you who don't know why I am referring to Toyota Hilux here, you can check the links in the description. I'll be putting the link to the video in which Top Gear featured Toyota Hilux. And if you are a Top Gear fan, you would have seen this truck in the video, in their studio. One red truck that was kept on a pedestal. That was the Toyota Helix truck that they used for the video that I am linking in the description. These are the two ways in which you can apply the Pareto principle in the matter of studies. In every subject that you take, there will be this high yield topic that comprises like 20 to 30 percent of the syllabus. And you can find out them like I told before or in the class also the teacher will be saying no. Like this is gonna come for exam, this is very important. So whenever a teacher or lecturer is saying that this topic is important, note that, note that down because that's gonna come for exam. That is a topic that they want to ask questions from and that is a topic that they want you to know for sure. So note down whenever a teacher is saying this topic is important, this is gonna come for exam. Then like I was telling, there will be 20 to 30 percent of the topic in a subject that is very high yield and when you open that those topics when you open those chapter then again you can apply Pareto principle once more if you don't have time if you don't have time at all you can apply that again so applying the Pareto principle like this is for the people 
who are studying just the day before exam not even the day before just the evening before exam if you are a person who is doing like that then apply pareto principle to everywhere like in the subject in the topic in the chapter everywhere you have to apply this pareto principle and you will find out the very high yield topic and you might not score like some 70 80% but there is a high chance that you will pass the exam but if you have more time then you can read all the topic that is going to come for the exam and apply pareto principle to each and every topic so you will be studying 20% from every topic 20% of the high yield portions from each and every topic so i had this notion right i had this notion that the amount of work you put in proportional to that you will get the output you will get the results but after seeing after seeing that incident in first year when some of us passed the exam and the people who actually worked harder than us didn't pass the exam we understood that that is not the case that is not the case at all always smart work trumps hard work i say that again always smart work trumps hard work every single time because by doing smart work like applying the pareto principle and all you are not sacrificing all of your time for just studying you are not sacrificing your happiness you are not sacrificing the time you want to spend with friends just for the sake of passing the exam you are not doing that so you will be having a kind of balanced life if you are doing smart work but if you are not ready to do this if you are not ready to work smartly then you will be having to spend a lot of time to read all the stuff you will be having to spend daily some 4 hours then only you will be able to finish the portion in time and appear for the exam with the feeling that i have studied everything that i wanted to study and that feeling will never come but still something like that that i have studied enough if you want that feeling without doing smart work then you will have to slog so i think this video has become a bit lengthy i'll be talking about the pomodoro technique in the next video and the tools that i use to keep track of the time in the next video so if you want to see those videos subscribe to my channel and ring that notification bell so that you will know when i will be uploading those videos and if you like this video give a thumbs up and share it with everyone who needs to see this so put this in the comment box are you already using these strategies that i have told you and were they helpful for you i think that my viewers would like to hear that from someone other than me who has been using these techniques already and who has found it helpful bye till we meet again